All right, I have a uh, Maya open. Some of you might be using 3D Studio Max or Cinema 4D or um, Lightwave or Softimage or who knows what other piece of software. Uh, so hopefully this information will apply somewhat. Um, many of you will be using Maya. So I'm gonna talk about a few tech things in Maya, um, but hopefully these concepts will be applicable to other uh, pieces of software as well. Okay, so I have constructed a very, very, very simple scene here in Maya that consists of, you know, a cube room, two cubes, and a sphere. And we're going to do some lighting in it. So I've already preset up a camera so that uh, we get this kind of rendering. So most times I see people lighting like this. So there's different types of lights, um, and they create, say, a point light in the scene. Let's see. Hey, why didn't it create? Create light. Point light. And they hit render. And it renders mighty fast, but it looks rather flat and looks really fake. Looks kind of blah. And so sometimes people will go and they will turn on shadows. So let's say, let's just say ray trace shadows on and you hit render. And so there you go. And it's amazing how many demo reels I see that this is their method for lighting. They might also go and create a ambient light to go along with this and hit render, uh, you know, something like that. And it just kind of looks flat and blah and not very realistic, definitely not composed very well. So I'm going to kind of walk through a process of, you know, a couple different techniques for doing very simple but still efficient lighting. So I already have some things preset, so I'm going to uh, unhide some lights here. I have a single light, so this is a spotlight. This spotlight has ray trace shadows turned on. So use ray trace shadows, it's on. So it's kind of coming in. If I look through that light, so I select the light, go under panels and say look through selected, I can kind of see where this is kind of shining in through this window. And I, it'll hit the cubes, it'll hit the uh, the sphere just a little bit and it hit the floor. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, do a render now. So what the light is doing, it's coming in, it's hitting these areas and then just stopping and uh, light is not bouncing into the scene. I could use global illumination uh, in this scene um, and we will talk about global illumination, but uh, a lot of people don't have the budget to be able to do that. They don't have a lot of render time. They need things to render really quickly. So I'm gonna show you some tricks to make things more efficient, make things a little bit faster. All right, so I've got this one light in the scene that is my key light. What I want to do in this scene is get light kind of bouncing into the scene. So I have, I have set up a few lights. So I'm gonna turn this one on and let you see the settings of what I've done. So mimicking light that's hitting the floor and bouncing back up. So what I've created is an, uh, an area light. The nice thing about area lights in Maya and a lot of other software is that, um, you know, so if I go to the create menu, lights, area light, uh, it's just gonna create this kind of square shaped light. Now this light will emit from that square out in one direction, um, kind of like, you know, light that's bouncing off the floor. So if I cleverly move this around and place this where I want it to be, um, I can have light that's bouncing off the floor. It also has a very soft fall off. So let's just take a look at what this looks like now. So here's our just key light. Hit render again. Now, instead of just having, you know, black, now I'm getting some light that's kind of bouncing up off the floor. So I'm going to turn on all of my different bounce lights that I have. Not very many, nice and simple. So I'm looking at all the places where this key light has hit. So it's hitting the wall, it's hitting the floor and placing bounce lights in those areas where the light would be bouncing off. So I've got one on the wall over here. I've got, you know, two on the floor, any of the areas that are kind of brightly lit um, to make that light kind of fall off. Now there is a key setting with this. Um, not to get too technical with Maya, but um, it has to have some sort of shadows. If I go on, there's two different types of shadows. 
Um, I'm assuming all of you that are watching this have at least a basic understanding of some 3D package of Maya. Um, I don't want to get into teaching you all the buttons and the knobs. You can learn that on your own. But look, there's two different kinds of shadows here. There's depth map shadows, which creates a texture map. And then there's ray trace shadows um, that will blur accurately, give shadows totally accurately. If you turn on ray trace shadows in Maya, um, using I'm using Mental Ray as my renderer right now. If you turn on ray trace shadows on an area light, this thing is going to take forever to render. Or well, not forever, it's just going to slow things way down. Um, so I am using shadow maps. Really simple, old school method that's been around for 20 something, 30 years, whatever. And uh, so I'm doing a texture size of 5 12, which is a nice small little map and then I have this filter and what I'm doing is I'm blurring this shadow map so this filter is kind of like a Gaussian blur in Photoshop so if I set it to you know somewhere around 7 it's gonna just kind of give me a nice soft shadow so let me do another render now so you can kind of see rendering again here we go uh, so you can't see the effect of that much can you did I hit render? Render. Here it goes. Okay, so now there's more, there's more bounce light now in the scene. You can kind of see it looks like light that's kind of bouncing up. Uh, another thing that we'll want to do is, um, okay, what, what's going on out here? If this is sunshine sunny, shining through a window, maybe we'd have some sort of, you know, blue sky or something out there, some sort of light that's coming from a sky. So I'm going to create a, or I already created one, create a big sphere. And I've assigned a texture to it. This is a Lambert texture. I can create a new one here, or material, say uh, Lambert. And I'm going to assign this to the sphere open this up and instead of color I'm gonna kinda of make it its color black but I'm gonna make its incandescence so if I want this to be a blue sky I can kinda of give it a sky blue type of color and now when I render I'm gonna have sky outside the window I could put a texture map on this um, it doesn't have to be a sphere it could be a plane or something like that that I put out there but uh, you know now I have a sky color so what happens with real sunlight is you've got light coming in you know that's from the sunlight itself has nice sharp shadows and then you've got light that's coming from the sky that has nice soft diffused shadows so there's a couple different ways we can mimic this light so I have a fill light so I'm going to turn on this fill light, which again is an area light shining in the window. So I kind of place this like the light that's coming in from the window. Nice soft shadows. This light itself has, um, again, soft shadow maps. And let's choose which color we want to make this. If we want it cool, um, let's go ahead and make it kind of a cool like the blue of the sky. And so we hit render again now you can see I'm getting this kind of like glow along the walls you know it's slowly building up here to being more and more kind of realistic you know I'm I'm hand placing very very simple technology lights in the place where real you know lighting would be I'm not doing any global illumination letting the computer figure this out for me I'm learning kind of uh, the the standard way that light bounces and hand placing light in those places so um, another thing that would happen in the scene is that light would come in it bounce off the floor but then it would bounce off those walls back around now I could I could continue to hand place bounce lights around the scene um, but what I really want is just a light that kind of bounces everywhere. Um, so let me show you a simple trick. And the, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to turn off all the lights, or I'm going to hide, hide the lights. And I'm going to come back here into the texture, you know, the hyper shade in Maya. This is my default texture that's assigned to everything, Lambert 1. And I'm going to create, I'm going to do a mental ray trick. So if you've got Maya, you know, you can use mental ray. I'm going to say create, uh, boy, it's been a long time since I've done this, textures and ambient occlusion. 
MIB ambient occlusion. So it creates this node. And what this is you normally used for, ambient occlusion is a common way for you know, faking diffused light in a scene. Um, a lot of people will split out an ambient occlusion pass, which basically what it does is it uses ray tracing to, you know, calculate between these objects to see, you know, how close the objects are to each other. And it will, you know, give you a black and white map, you know, dark being soft, you know, the contact point of the shadows and then the white being, you know, where they don't connect. So I'm going to change some of these settings. I'm going to say the max distance. This scene is rather small. This is Maya units. So I'm going to say the max distance. This is kind of important to set something in here at least. I'm going to set this at five. So it will go five Maya units before it doesn't calculate anymore. Um, and I'm going to set the sample. 16 is really low. So I'm going to say 100. Um, and what I'm going to do, this is kind of a trick in Maya, that instead of rendering its own pass on its own, I'm going to map the ambient occlusion into the Lambert and I'm going to map it into ambient color. So map ambient occlusion into ambient color and let's hit render now. Now what this is doing is it's faking just a real simple light. So it has ambient occlusion right now. So this is calculated totally on how close these objects are to each other. The closer they get to each other and to themselves, it will just kind of create this dark shadow. So this is a total fake. There's no real light that's bouncing in here. There's no photons. There's no, um, you know, complex, well, not too complex. There's some semi-complex thing that's going on with ambient occlusion. But what this is a, a really nice trick for getting kind of soft light in the scene. So if I turn on those lights again, like we had before, and hit render now, you can see what it did is it kind of, it, it turned it from this to this. So I'm using my ambient occlusion to make it look like light that's just kind of bouncing all over around the room every which way I want. Um, and this really quickly gives you a really nice look. You know, technically, if you want it to render really fast, you don't even have to have any of the extra kind of bounce lights. Bounce lights are definitely important, but you could, you know, you could just render this. If you're noticing I'm doing this, uh, you know, right in front of you, I'm, I'm letting it do the full render time as we go. There, it rendered in seven seconds. You got a decent looking, you know, scene. You've got nice soft light kind of from the sky and you've got, you know, sunlight coming in a window. It works for, you know, very simple projects, small studios, uh, student animations. This could work totally fine and give you a, a decent type of look. Uh, now with some planning, you can definitely make this look a lot better. So some tricks with this, um, let's set some colors. So instead of just having white and black, I can say, all right, well, let's make that light look like the light from the sky. So the bright color, I'm going to do that kind of blue. We'll do that same color blue we had done before. Um, and now let's look and see what it looks like. Here it goes. And now what it's going to do is the brightest area of this occlusion is going to be tinted blue. Um, so you can kind of see a before and after. So this is just white. This is blue. The nice part about this method is it gives you total control. So you can say, well, I want to change it to where it's like a sunset type scene. So I'm going to tint this kind of a warm type color. And I'm also going to go back and adjust my sky color. So here's my sky. I'm going to make this one warm as well. And I'm going to turn back on my bounce lights and my fill lights. I'm going to take that one fill light that I had turned blue and I'm going to turn this one warm as well and hit render. <clears throat> and now I've got a very warm looking scene, kind of evening sunset. It's almost sepia tone kind of looking scene. Um, all right, so let me do a couple other lights that will help this scene read a little bit better. Now, light that comes in through a window, a lot of times you get this just kind of glow around the edges. So I'm going to take the light. This is sort of hacky, but uh, this will work. So I'm going to take that light that I had coming in through, you know, through the window, and I'm going to duplicate it, move it out 
and spin it around 180 degrees to shine back onto the wall. Now, this is sort of going to mimic the idea of light from the scene bouncing back up close around the window. So if I hit render again, now we're just going to get this very soft glow around the window without having any actual bloom or anything like that. It's actual light onto the wall. Um, but you can see it gives gives a nice kind of soft type glow. And then I have two more um, lights that I'm going to use to kind of rim the top of this sphere. I'd imagine a little bit more light would hit the sphere. So what I've done with these lights is I have connected them only to the sphere. So the way I've done that is with the light linking. So if I go under window settings or relationship editors, light linking, light centric, I can go in light by light and I can say this light only affects this sphere. Um, where be, by default these these lights, everything's kind of selected. So I can say this light only affects, you know, it, it doesn't affect the walls or it does affect the walls. And so I've gone on this rim light and this rim light and deselected the walls and the extra cubes and just said, all right, this is going to affect the sphere only. And then the render will look like this. I know I'm flying through this. It's because there's other things that I want to get to, and I only have two hours to get all this juicy stuff in. So, you know, a little bit of rim light, you know, helps separate this. Uh, we talked about this with, um, in the composition section, you know, you want, you want all of your objects to be readable. You want to have, you know, rim lights or whatever to be able to help tell the shape and the form of these objects. Um, one other thing I'm going to do real quick, um, another thing that I see quite commonly that people do that, that bothers me is that nothing in the real world is, has true sharp edges quite like this. Uh, and, and I see a lot of modeling that's done where they just let the computer kind of run, control it. It's really harsh, sharp edges. Uh, it's nice when you get to um, just put a little bit of an edge on that. You can use a, a bevel um, or you know whatever, whatever you want. Uh, I, this is kind of an extreme case. Um, maybe we'll do it on this too, just to give a little bit of bevels around the edges so that what this will do is it will pick up light uh, more realistically uh, a little bit more realistically you're gonna get little oops this looks kinda bad on the background here because the way it beveled it but instead of just having these harsh edges you know putting a little bit of a bevel, bevel um, helps it pick up light just a little bit better um, you know down in the corners whatever so Simple test scene. This is a, a good method for um, really quickly getting, you know, getting something, you know, very basic into your scene. Oh, one last thing I want to do too. Sometimes you get bloom um, from, you know, the background. So what I can do on this sphere with my incandescence is I can go under special effects and just add a little bit of glow. So let's let's say something like that and do a render it's it's doing a post process so it will render the whole image and then it will calculate a kind of a glow bloom you could do this in your composite as well um, you know separate out that layer and kind of blur it and add it back over top you know give a little bloom from the window um, but pretty quickly you know we've come up with a scene that uh, you know very controllable we have control over how much bounce light you know, each of these, uh, you know, how much light is bouncing up from each of these different lights. Uh, we can control intensity to say, you know, we want more bounce light right here on the floor. I can take this bounce light. Uh, its intensity right now is set to 0.1. So I could say, you know, 0.25. And we could compare that to another render. And we will effectively, you know, brighten that bounce light just in that spot. Uh, so it gives us a lot of control uh, in these scenes using this method. Okay, so there's the basics of something that's very fast, very efficient, renders really quickly. We're getting a render in only eight seconds. Of course, this scene is amazingly simple. So let's look at some examples that are not so simple.